Hi everyone, welcome back. Part 10 of my cargo trailer to camper conversion. It's coming along pretty good. Uh, this section, this video, we're going to cover uh, plumbing and propane, the gas, how I hooked it up. Um, plumbing, it's pretty easy, you know. Uh, worst case scenario, you get a leak. With the gas, I'm not going to get into specifics because I think every state is different, every uh, province is different but you need to do the research, find out what is legal in your state and uh, follow that code. So I'll show you how I did it anyways. Maybe it'll give you a few ideas, but if you're unsure, the best best thing you can do is just take it to, prof to a professional. Uh, take it into an RV dealer or do some of the work and then get the RV dealership to inspect it. But uh, let's get started, I'll, I'll show you what I did. Okay, let's just give you a quick overview of the the setup I've got here and then I'll explain how I did it. So I've got my sink over here, hot and cold water there. You can see the uh, the water lines there, the drain. It's just uh, this braided tubing right out the bottom. Pretty simple. Here's my shower. I've got the shower curtain in here right now just as uh, waterproofing. This is a shower rod I just made out of PVC. It's three quarter inch PVC. And then these things here that hold it onto the wall are just, uh, they're built for copper tubing, to hold copper tubing. It supports the stands for copper tubing. So that's what I used in there. So I built my little shower um, rod that way and that works well. And then I got to put another little shower curtain up front here. So I've got my, my shower here, I've got to set that up still. In there I've got my on-demand hot water tank. If you watch the video I'll show you how I installed that. Here's my little two burner uh, stove. So that works pretty good. It's all set up. And then just up here I've got my water uh, pump on and off switch there. Good, so let's walk through it. I'll show you the water lines first. So I've already covered my tank, so let's just move on from the tank. So from my tank, I come up here. I've got this little T. I was thinking maybe I might cut it and put it into a, a tube, into a tubing, like maybe into a jar of RV antifreeze if I ever want to do that. Uh, then I've got my little filter. Tiny little pump that is super, super noisy. Don't really like that, but whatever. My water line coming out there goes in behind all the way out. And what I did with my water lines is I put them all at a quite an angle all the way down to my drain here at the back. Because I do a lot of winter camping and I can't go and fill my lines with antifreeze every time and then flush it and then go camping. You know, I might go on a weekend and then work for a week and then back on a weekend. So this way I can just open that up and all the lines will just self drain all the way back and out. So it comes in here and in behind here is a tankless water heater. So uh, I'll show you in the video how I installed that. Uh, I won't get into that right now. If you want to just continue watching the video, I'll show you because I, I got a better explanation for that. Here's my pipes. I've got a drain on the hot and on the cold side there. So that I can drain out all that water for again just so it doesn't freeze in here during the week. That's uh, plumbed up with propane and then it comes over here there's my sink I've just got braided lines there to the sink standard just like you would do um, a normal house that's how I just plumbed it so and then I've got a T here for this drain comes down drain because you need to put a vent in here otherwise this will never drain it takes forever to drain so if you put the vent in it it'll drain out nice and fast so that's what I use and then that just goes through the floor for my tank down below I don't have a tank I've just got one of those portable uh, tanks with the wheels and that's what I'm going to use, I think. I don't really like the idea of having a tank underneath. I'd rather have one that I can, they can, can take off or put on, throw in the back of my truck. So for the propane, I've got two propane lines. 
coming into here. But you got to remember that I don't I don't drive this with propane and I don't have the propane on while I sleep. There's no need. So the only thing the propane runs is a two burner and the little hot water tank. So if we come under here That's my propane regulator there. It's a two two tank regulator. I mounted it right to the body there and then I've got a bit of flexible copper tubing. Now all the copper tubing you have to have special copper tubing for propane. It's, it's a thicker tubing. And then what I did is I ran it into black steel pipe. Um, it depends on where you're at but black steel is uh, is okay in these but galvanized is not something with the reaction that it has inside when the propane's going through it I don't know I just didn't use it and then I've got my two branches there propane lines I mean copper lines and it's all flared fittings so they're all flared fittings in North America that's all you can do in um, Europe I think in the UK they're allowed compression fittings but not here here you need to have flare fittings so those are all flared fittings uh, what I did with it is I took and I put plugs in each spot so I put a plug here and a plug down by the tank and then I I hooked up I've got a little T up front and I pressurized the whole line up to 15 psi. I just used my my water uh, like radiator pressure tester, a uh, coolant pressure tester from a car. So I, I just pumped it up, had it all sealed up, and then I held the pressure 15 psi for two hours is what it held for. And I was pretty confident it didn't drop at all. So that was good. It was sealed up well. So let me show you how I put that hot water tank in, what I did to make it what I feel is safe. So let's talk a little bit about what I'm going to use as a water heater. This is what I'm going to use, just one of these instant water heaters, they're the cheap Chinese ones. Um, but I'm going to vent it out the side of the trailer. So what I've done is I've got this. And I'm going to cut it so it makes a little hood over top of the exhaust. And then this hole here I'll vent outside the trailer. And in the bottom I'll cut some ventilation holes to allow air to come in and air out. And then just above this, off to the left hand side, I've got a carbon monoxide sensor mounted. But uh, I did this in the last trailer and it worked great. So now you're not packing around all the weight of a hot water tank. It's instant, and I'm gonna put this where you can control it from the shower, uh, the controls, so you can adjust it if you need to while you're in there. Okay, so here's the finished setup. This is how I do it anyways. Again, I recommend that you do your own research, do it the way that you feel safe, but uh, this has worked for me. So this is uh, just a duct, you know, like a, a vent that you'd put onto your floor. And I just uh, cut it and bent it to fit around the heater, blocking off everything. And then there's some vents that are up here so I've just blocked those off. I left these obviously still in the bottom ones. But that just covers the whole heater. And then this is going to go right through the wall. So I'll cut that out and then I'll cut just a little bit bigger around it so the insulation's a little bit further back and I'll put a piece of metal pipe in there just to protect the insulation and the wood because this does get very hot. This here gets very, very hot. 
and then on the back like where I mount this I'm gonna put metal on the back and I'll probably put a metal um, piece of metal up here just to kind of deflect the heat a little bit anyways I'll show you that in a bit Okay, to protect my insulation, I've got, I, I made up this little piece here. It's just a piece of ducting, five inch ducting. Should fit right inside that five inch hole over there. And I just undid the ducting, laid it flat, marked an inch and an eighth here, just the thickness of the, of the insulation. And then on the top, I just cut all these little tangs. And then we'll just roll it into the circle, snap it together, and then screw this to the wood on the outside. So that should protect my insulation there. Here's our finished product. So I've got my vent inside here. And then this is that steel uh, ducting cut out fit around there. So you can see it's steel all the way to the steel, the aluminum siding. And it's got a nice air gap all the way around it to relieve the heat. So now I'm going to fit my, my heater. My water heater, the duct right over top of here. This is also four inch, just like my heater ducting is four inch. So I'm gonna slide that on there. So that's how I put the hot water tank in there. But now to make sure that it was safe, what I did is I hooked everything up and I just ran my shower on full hot, just running now constantly. What I've got is I've got my temperature gauge set up here. And then I, I just made sure that this was not, this box in here was not getting too hot. Nice cooking hot water out of there. Well, there we go. We hit 65 degrees Celsius, so that's not too bad. And out here after running for, this thing is, you know, it's, it's warm, but not too bad actually at all. And none of it's warm around it. So I think that's good. Found that'll work good. Well, that's it. We're done this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you got some ideas for your build or for your future plan build. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. And subscribe if you want to see some more videos like this and some camping, some off-road camping we're going to do with it. And we'll see you in the next video.